to be here. Yeah, we're getting Stop, close. Hey. Gotta get in close to get Whoa. the action. Cross, waves. Oh, oh, waves. Nice, nice, wow. super nice. Good job. G'day guys, welcome back. Another video coming to you from somewhere in Indonesia, pretty much Eastern Indonesia nowadays. We're um, heading back into Papua. Yeah, today we're doing a passage from tip of the Papua mainland, you can see here on the Google Earth map, and we're going northwest over to Mazul the southernmost island of the Raja Ampat group. I've been there before, uh, a couple of videos, actually my two boat tour videos are pretty popular, I did there. Marie's never been there though, so we're gonna go for a week or so there uh, and check all that out. So um, look forward to those videos. It's for me nearly one of the most stunning places in the world. I've probably said that a few times, but like this is truly for me personally, it's just a mind blowing place and I can't wait to go and see more of it because I definitely haven't seen all of it. I've only been there twice. So yeah, I'm about to crank up the engine, hook the halyard on, pull up the anchor, and get out of here. It probably won't be a very exciting sail over. Um, this region, I'll show you a wind map here, but the last few, well the last couple of weeks and where we're going now, until all the way to Sarong basically, we're against the wind. It's just the northwestern monsoon and uh, it's sort of like a channel it funnels down through between Saram and Papua and um, we've sort of been motor sailing for the last, I don't know, few few passages for sure. It hasn't been much fun at all. Sometimes it feels like we've been just going in glue. I've been, engine revs are quite high and we're only doing four and a half knots and uh, just feels like we're not really getting anywhere. But we knew this part of the trip was gonna be like that um, at this time of the year, so that's the way it is. Ready to go? Hope so. How far are we going? How long is this place? Uh, it's around 95 miles, so it's not so far. Um, the Navionics maps here are just useless. They're about, I don't know, maybe half a mile or a mile out. Look at this, I'll show you exactly. So we're here obviously. We anchored right in this corner here last night on that green spot. And we're just leaving there now and this is where it says we are. And that is um, 1.1 nautical miles away from where we actually are. So yeah, pretty bloody useless the maps here. Uh, just using satellite maps for navigation and the Navionics basically for a rough idea of how the farther distances are. It must just be down this part of um, Papua because in Raja Ampat, yeah obviously they're not perfect those maps but they are way more better than here so this open ocean straight in front of us now uh, it looks very very flat very calm which is good because at this time of the year as I said it's the northwest monsoon so you either get 20 knots in your face and the accompanying swell or we've gone for a window of basically calm for 24 hours um, so it's probably going to mean motor sailing hopefully we can do some zigzags and at least get this sail to help us on our way um, but yeah it's calm so that's good you know you'd rather be motoring in calm and, and flat water than than pushing against a dead headwind of 20 knots and and one and a half meter swell so yeah as much as I dislike motoring if I have to motor I definitely prefer it in calm water um, over that direction is about 100 miles of Saram, Maluku Regency. And yeah, as I said, behind us is Papua, Fuck Fuck. It's quite a big city, quite a nice place actually. Um, we only stayed one day there, got 40 litres of diesel and a pizza, and then we left. Uh, looking forward to getting to places a bit more where we can be alone in nature. And uh, yeah, where we're going is no internet. Probably going to be two weeks offline and uh, really looking forward to it. But yeah. It's probably going to be about 18 hours of just diesel diesel sounds. I'll put on the put on the headphones and I've downloaded a few podcasts and I've still got a couple of books to read. So we'll just uh, take turns being at attention and the other one can just do whatever. Um, 
I'm gonna pull the sail up now. Even though there's not much wind, you can see the flag there above Marie. It's it's blowing a little bit straight from the front, obviously, but um, I always pull the sail up because this boat doesn't need much to help it out. You get a little bit of apparent wind for motoring, five knots, and it actually is enough to give you another knot from the sail. So it definitely makes sense. But when I'm motor sailing like this, I tend to put the first reef in just because if there is any bit of a swell, it doesn't tend to bang from side to side when there's one reef in. I think it's just the balance of where it is on the mast or whatever. When I have the full sail up, it'll tend to the top half of the sail or sort of flop over side to side and it's a bit annoying and not good for the sail, obviously. It rained overnight, quite a lot actually. And I didn't have the sail bag closed because we only arrived in the evening. It's happened a few times that um, I went to pull up the sail the next morning and I'd forgotten to shut the, the windows in the galley and uh, the, the water pools in the top of the sail and as soon as you pull the sail up you get about 20 litres on the couch. See, it's very calm as you can also probably hear engines on uh, we are motor sailing though we're only sort of chugging along at half revs and we're doing yeah, five and a half knots it's all right is what it is it's very very calm though Marie's just out the back um, knitting a new woolly jumper because it's so cold here now I might be going back to Europe in March so I might need a woolly jumper and I'm cooking up some lunch that um, Marie made yesterday, roast chicken, roast potatoes. It's calm enough that I'm sitting inside. Marie's sitting outside crocheting, as I said, but she's keeping a look out and there's nothing around anyway. And I'm, I'm editing the, the video, the passage from uh, Tuol to Triton Bay. So you guys will have already seen that by now, obviously, but um, yeah, that's what I do when we're cruising along. Oh, a little update, guys. It's about four in the afternoon now. Yeah, day's just flowing on by, really. We've just been, uh, I've been editing, hanging out on the computer. Marie's still crocheting. Look at all that. It's got half a, half a jumper done. How's it going? I would say it's not even a quart, but yeah, it's good. You got any uh, arm pump? It's arm pump. Are you getting swollen wrists from all that knotting? Yeah. Yeah. Like an old lady. And yeah, we're passing by these islands over here. It's a whole bunch of them. They are called Pulau Sabuda. And yeah, that's on the way. So we're heading up to Mizul, up there. Left from down here, going over there. Only got 70 miles to go. With the, that'll put us in at about 5.30, 6 in the morning, so there's no point going any faster than that anyway. Um, you'll see when we get there, but there's no way you can arrive there at dark. It's impossible whether you, you know, just asking to wreck your boat. So no point getting there before sunrise. And uh, when we get there, it's not an anchorage. We've got to tie the boat uh, bow and stern to rocks. So I have to put the dinghy in the water beforehand, prepare all the ropes and all that sort of stuff. So by the time I got that done, the sun should be up and we'll be good to go. Well, it's that time of the day. It's golden hour. Photographers love this time. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna throw the little drone up. It's a little bad boy. Little DJI Air 2. Throw it up to get you some nice uh, sunset shots before the dark ascends for another night. Let's do it. Where to go?
Well, I love the drone shot. It always looks so good. Just uh, the different perspective. I mean, look at this. This is right now. This is also right now. It's crazy. Technology, eh? I love it. All right, I'll fly, turn the GoPro off and fly the drone. Dinner time here on Chehalion. It actually looks bright with this camera, but it's pretty much long gone sunset. Looks pretty good still, huh? What are we having tonight? Why okay, are you asking me when I'm with the mouthful? It's a. Your mother would be so proud. Yeah. It's a soba noodle with a chicken, garlic, and vegetables is it splendid yeah it's quite good enak enak sekali ah it's been the more mellow of days ever i mean not great if you're talking pure sailing obviously but easy on the boat easy on the mind it's the evening and uh, we can so from far away um what do you call that a, a storm <laughs> A storm with a lot of lightning and it's super nice to watch from far. I would love to be not inside, but from here it's just like all these big clouds just suddenly light from inside and make it all these beautiful shapes. It's really nice. Well, good morning. As you can see, we've arrived in Mazul. It's about 6, 6.30 or something in the morning. Uh, pretty uneventful night, apart from the big lightning storm you saw. We we're pretty happy that didn't uh, come towards us because that thing just was exploding electricity bombs for like an hour, but it, it just stayed about 10 miles away from us. It was pretty amazing. It's cool to watch, but well, you wouldn't want to be in the middle of that thing. Anyway, we've arrived here, looks amazing. Um, it's a bit tricky place to tie up, so we'll show you that. So because this is uh, not a place we can anchor, it's very deep, we've got to tie bow and stern to rocks inside here. I've got to prepare the dinghy in advance because I've got to get in the dinghy to go to tie up onto the rocks. So we're just drifting around outside here where it's where there's a bit more space I put the engine on the dinghy and tow that in and then we're I've already prepared some ropes and we'll get in there and uh, should go pretty quick there's just not a lot of space inside where we've got to tie up there's not a lot of space for the um, you know to maneuver so you got to be pretty uh, pretty ready when you get there
So it's pretty optimal conditions as you can see. There's no wind because if there's wind it swirls around in these big cliffs. There's no wind. It's very calm. Um, I know where I have to tie up so it's all going to be good. Marie's pretty nervous because last time we were here it was a big storm and it was just getting dark and we actually pulled the pin and didn't stay here at all. Look how, look how clear the water is. Yeah. Look at this place. Woo! Nice day. Oh. Oh, it's crazy how the reef is closed, yeah? Yeah. I like that. All right, I'm going to jump in the dinghy now, leave Marie here on the mothership. Jump in the dinghy and go and sort out the ropes and uh, get us attached. That's the first time we are doing that, like I am doing that with Vernon. And definitely, yeah, I am not feeling super good with that. Like there is this definitely super place. And yeah, my instinct is I don't want to be close of a reef. I know that Vernon knows what he's doing, but it, it, it's a bit it's a bit hard to just watch and relax. Yeah, so we're all tied up now. That was relatively easy. Uh, obviously it makes it a lot easier if there's no wind in here blowing the blowing Shehelian around. So now, I mean, basically the, the goal is to just get us secure. And now I'll go around and uh, retail the knots, make sure the ropes are all good, all that sort of stuff. Just, just make sure we're actually secure. It's quite a distance though. You can see the bow rope goes all the way over to this island. I don't know, it's probably 60 meters or something. It's not too bad, but... So we'll tighten up the ropes a bit more, make sure she sits here good. Because as I said, when the wind does blow through here, it really whistles around and amongst all these big cliffs. But, um, should be good. We'll sort it out and then, uh, yeah, get some breakfast. I only slept, I think, two hours last night. So, um, get some breakfast and then probably have a sleep, but pretty stoked to be here. What do you reckon, babe? The bugs are eating all the bananas. Uh, is that your most pressing worry? Yeah, right I now. want to eat my bananas. They're yeah. gonna stay here far from everything. I have to take care of the food. Yeah. You happy? What do you think of this place? No, it's quite amazing. And you I'm didn't... quite happy to see corals, like beautiful corals again and clarity in the water because this last uh, weeks or months we didn't have that. Yeah, the corals that go around here are just crazy. They actually come out and they're just a flat plate and then they overhang everywhere. So it's from a distance it looks like these islands are actually floating sort of on these coral beds. Anyway, um, yeah that was this video. Um, we'll probably bring you another video from here in Mazul before we head up to Sarong. Thanks for watching. Um, thanks to the patrons and PayPal. Actually got a lot of money on PayPal this last week which was awesome. You guys are just giving us little presents. It's pretty cool. Thank you guys that have stuck with us. We appreciate every single one of you. and. Uh, keep bringing you this content that you guys help us produce basically 
So anyway, see you next week. Cheers, guys. Bye bye. Good morning. Well, we just dropped anchor here along the coast of, um, well, Papua mainland actually. We left Kaimana yesterday, last night, and uh, we're just heading north. And we came across this massive waterfall here. Probably doesn't look that big in the GoPro, but it's called Kitty Kitty. Well, we didn't just come across it, we knew it was here, obviously, but it's uh, very far from anywhere, and there's no, you know, there's no marker signs or walkways or anything like that. It's just a massive waterfall in the middle of nowhere. Pretty sweet, just a sand patch there where we anchored the boat. I'll show you some drone footage in a minute. We're going to go in a bit closer now and try and get under it maybe. But there's a couple more small ones around the corner. We're going to go and do some washing. I don't know if you can see the power of it, but we were expecting to be able to go under, but I think it's not possible. Oh. There's the, the waves going directly in, in on the reef. And really strong. I would not be comfortable to be under that. Now we've got some little surf waves here, can I guess? Woo! <laughs> oh my god! an amazing looking place can't quite see Shahalian but it's just around the corner there two minutes away and now we've got a more manageable water pool one that we can uh, yeah actually sort of wash off get some fresh water vibes going pretty cool start to the day it's only about eight o'clock in the morning Behind the waterfall, that's pretty loud in here. But what an awesome way to start the day, eh? Yeah, just magical and we were thinking of maybe skip this part because yesterday it was rough and we were not sure it was possible to anchor here but I'm so happy we did it, it's so yeah. nice. Yeah, we were anchored further down because yesterday it was really rolly here and uh, we couldn't anchor here overnight, it would have been terrible. And then this morning we thought it'd be the same so I packed up the dinghy, loaded the outboard, all that sort of stuff and mowed it up here and it was uh, calm enough. It's still a bit rolly but you know we're not on the boat so it doesn't matter. But so nice like you get the opportunity to get in a waterfall clean some clothes a little bit mostly just clean us and yeah fresh water is such a such a treat for us you know 
I mean, we have fresh water on the boat, but just it feels wasteful to use too much of it because it's hard work to go and get it from somewhere. But here it's just pouring out of the mountain and it just doesn't matter how much you use. It's pretty awesome. The simple joys of a long-term sailor, eh? These days everyone's got a bloody mortar maker, so no one probably knows what I'm talking about anymore. We're old school. Just pour. So now to get out of here, we have to pick the right moment to not being smashed by the wave and being all salty again. Salty. Yeah, all fresh now, real salty again. Well, I need a legs. <laughs> 